Our topic for today's workshop is um, the opening. Now, Barbara sent out a notice saying we were doing great openings. And uh, Dixie Ann and I were too afraid to contact her and correct her. So we're just going to go with that for right now. Uh, now, and I guess we should have did a little homework on the front end because uh, Dixie made a point to turn down these yeah. documents when she came in, but it's too late. All y'all already read them out. Yeah, okay. Good, good. But at some point, we're going to ask you to flip those over. We're going to kind of come to those. We went and took uh, opening passages from uh, writers, novelists in our group. Uh, there was no rhyme or reason. I had a stack of books on the shelf, and I just started pulling books down, and we just started grabbing opening passages. So I would put in a disclaimer on this right now. I apologize if I made a misspelling in a piece of a passage that belongs to one of you or any of you. Tough. <laughs> but there's a whole lot of time. <laughs> uh, see anything else? Uh, you may notice that we're wearing black. Uh, Dick Sand called me and said, well, "You know, we got to dress the same." <laughs> and, and I said, "Well, what do you have in mind?" She said, "Well, we could wear something pink and tight fitting." <laughs> Well, this is the writer part coming out. So, so basically, that's why we dressed it like we kind of thought it would be something different to kind of coordinate a little bit. Okay. Uh, one more thing about openings. Uh, some good friends of mine own the entertainment newspaper in the Tampa area, small paper. And I was talking to her a little while ago about writing and using writings in her newspaper and so forth and books. And, you know, do they uh, support authors and put them in it? She said, I'm going to tell you my, my thing with that. If they don't catch me in that first page or two, I ain't reading that book again. That's just, I, I don't have time, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm running a business, it's got to catch me. And so, you know, that kind of led us into this whole exercise about our openings. And so I think I'm going to turn it over to you. So, just to piggyback on that, an opening is like making a first impression, right? You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And our group is about feedback and encouragement. But what does the more critical reader who's never met you at, what does that person think? You know, we know how nice you are, how many years you've been working on this project, we, we watch you kind of struggle through it, and we're, we're, we're loving and forgiving of each other, and we know how good it's going to be, we have an idea what the story's like by the time you're done. But we want to take that step back and look at everything that we're doing from the light of a stranger, or a publisher even. One book that was recommended a little bit after I joined TAN was The First Five Pages by, by Noah Lukman. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he says in there is he said that publishers really don't say the first five pages, they look at the first five lines. Mm -hmm. And that's why we said the opening, and that's why if you notice, we have these, just basically a paragraph, the first paragraph of, of these works. Because he said that he, it's, great to be a writer. He said, the art of writing cannot be taught, but the craft of writing can be taught. So what that means is, as we look at what we, we do and what we did, we can see, hmm, did I hook that person in the first few lines? Did, did, I, did I make them think? Did I make them want to go on? We want to pack that punch into the, the first few lines of our books. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to ask you, to be the editor slash publisher, and you're looking at the first few lines of a book, and you have to decide, did it move you? Do you like it? Is there enough there for you to continue? And why or why not? So we will give each other constructive feedback, and we'll also re recognize the fact that not all books start off with a bang. There are a lot of great works that have a slow start. And from Nobel Prize winning authors, books have a slow start. So this is not a judgment or a critique of the book in that sense. This is just talking about the opening. Your one chance to get that publisher to say yes before they throw it off before finishing that first page. When we look at it, we're going to ask you to look at one section. If you'll turn over your paper, if you haven't already done so. <laughs> I don't have one. And what will? OK, we've got plenty more. What we've done is we've taken works by people. Some people are not, not here anymore, I think, but uh, 
from various authors, as, as Alfred has said, but we took the names off to, so people won't feel so self-conscious at first. And then at the end, if you really want to read it based on what you've just read, we have a list for you with the names of, of the author matched up with the books. And of course, if the authors want to chime in and say something, that's, that's fine as well. But our, our exercise will be like this. We're going to read the first paragraph silently because you all can read. And we don't want to read to you because we don't want to inflect our, our opinion into the book for you. You're going to read it for yourself. And once you do that, we're going to ask, hmm, what do you think? And we'll have a discussion on that. As we go through that, though, keep in mind the points that, that we're making because our exercise at the end of all of this will be to write a, a paragraph, an opening. And you might want to take some of these, these cues that you probably there to use or have, and you write an opening that you can then share with the group if you'd like. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yes? Uh, I wanted to read them out loud. Dixie <laughs> uh, Ann said that I was showing bias to the ones that I like. And, and to her point, that's right. So that's why the exercise would be you have to have your own perception. All right. But we will we'll give you about a minute or so to read and digest it, and then we'll have a discussion, and then we'll start over with the, with the next one, and, and so on and so forth. OK? So start reading. So does anybody want to volunteer an opinion on, on whether that book grabs you or not? That's the first thing. Do you, did it move? And if you don't volunteer, we're going to ask you. I have a question. You said this is the first paragraph of the book, or is yes. it a synopsis? Of Every one of these is just the first Open. first opening lines of the book. Yes. Yes? Uh, I would not read this book. Why? Because I find it boring. I mean, it does nothing that grabs me to make it interesting to want to, oh, I can do you know, to go to the next part. And I don't mean to be insulting to the writer. It's just that I need something to grab me. I mean, you had a comment, I think. No, I just had a question. Okay. It has this one in particular. Well, I guess I do have a comment. Because this one in particular reads to me more of a synopsis on the back of the book than the first paragraph. Right, right. And, and Cynthia? I want to echo what you said about it. I thought it was a synopsis. Um, but if they had let off with Jack has this thing about not wanting to follow orders. That was the first sentence I was like, oh, okay, now there's some conflict or something. Mm -hmm. Something to go by, but okay, I would not have gone with that as an intro. Gotcha. That first sentence, this setting is in a small, like, I don't, it, it's not a town in Florida, period. It's yeah, that, but no, I mean, chapter. just the, it doesn't sound like it's coming from a, a narrator. It sounds mm -hmm. like, you know, somebody's you know, like a commercial an, or something, I don't know. But because of this title, I would give it the first chapter. If the first chapter didn't get, because I want to know what his adventures is about his job. I kind of want to know, you know, that's fairly interesting to me, but that didn't grab me, but I would read the first chapter. Gotcha. I was about to say the same thing. It didn't really grab me, but it was enough for me to want, I would read at least another page or two to see where it went. Okay, I own the book. Okay. I bought it because of the title mm -hmm. of the author. Uh. I have not gotten through that book. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been me. <laughs> I, I did because I'm trying to give it a chance. You know, it's it's. it's yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm I'm trying to give it a chance. I would have yeah. kept. Yeah. I would have yeah. kept. I, I would have read more. Yeah. So yeah, but, I would let's do. just stick to the opening. I don't want to go into. Yeah. Yeah. On the yeah. other hand, though, what I'm hearing yes. from yeah. from everybody is there are two things that we at least two of the things that we look for in a book as we start reading is conflict and something that piques our curiosity mm -hmm. so it would be fair to say that that's something to keep in mind when you're starting up if you get a bang the that one minute to grab somebody somebody may be impatient and go nah, 
Or somebody may say, ah, I'll give them a little bit of a chance. But either way, you need those two elements. Does anybody have any more comments about this one before we go on to the next one? Well, the setting is, is in a small town, small fast in town of Florida. That starts off kind of cliche to me. Yeah, you know, cliche. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, just, it runs along that, those same lines, and it's like, OK. Mm -hmm. We 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 Okay, yeah, y'all get the gist of the exercise. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Great. Next. Okay. One. It grabbed my attention up. She just, I like violence. <laughs> I, I'm partial, I am partial to violence. So, um, I, I would, yeah, like, God, oh, this chick got a lot going on. It puts me in the mind frame of The Coldest Winter Ever, which is one of the most amazing books ever written. So. Well, I've actually read the book, so that tells you I got through it. <laughs> you got through it. <laughs> but did you get through it because you were supporting an author or because it really counted? It was a good yeah, story, but it needed some editing. Barbara once said that you know all books shouldn't be published. I would be. Well, never mind. I'm not gonna... <laughs> I distinctly remember her saying it in a meeting one day, but not this one. I'm not referring to this one. I have a question. Did you intentionally leave off quotation marks or was that how it was written? This is strictly uh, it's, it's first person. So. Well, I know, but it was when you put in the well, that kind of changes it a little bit. That's I, I will well, that's why I said yeah. editing. For me, the, the first couple of lines sounded real cliche. Yeah. You know, and, and I would have loved to have found out whether or not you were hard, rather than you telling me you were hard. It's a show me not telling. Yes. Show me not telling. You learned that over in the barbershop. We're going to say barbershop. Yes. Um, again, just like in the first one, I would have gone with a sentence that was in the middle of the paragraph mm -hmm. to start off. Like, I would have started off with, I am enraged and full of pain. And then I'd be like, like oh, God, what's happening to this woman? Yeah. You know, so my parents were you could have taken out the first two sentences, and then it would have been even better. But it, it hooked me, because I wanted to know what caused all this rage, rage, pain. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I hate being asked questions. Yeah. I, I, I want the question to come out of me. Instead of you mm -hmm. telling me what to ask, you may ask. I'm like, no, I wasn't asking. So I'm lost. So I'm reading the book now, and I'm thinking, I didn't ask that question. So I'm kind of, the next line is kind of lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a TV show host or what? Yeah. <laughs> I tend to like arrogant characters in first person because you know they're going to fall, mm -hmm. which is good because you want to see your character change. If the character doesn't change, good, bad, or ugly, then the book wasn't worth reading in the first place. Okay. All right, so what we've added to our list, we have conflict and curiosity, and we have show me, not tell me, mm -hmm. and we have avoiding cliches. Okay, next one. I read it and I wanted, I waited to find out where the pink diamond was. <laughs> Like, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you point out something 
you. Did you notice the energy in the room, how people didn't even wait to start talking about it? <laughs> <laughs> ask anybody. <laughs> and, and it was the same way when we were doing the exercise, yes. and I was reading it. That's right. what I said. But you can't read them. It's definitely grabbed my attention mm -hmm. because it's like she was, you know, like fate allowed her to catch this information. Was it really fate? Or was she just being no? No, because she said it's not something that she normally does. You know, and she had that nag, and you can't get mad because God gave us women's intuition. You know, that something just pulled out of She had to look at here. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> She discovered a son that wasn't hers. That's yeah. She got me right there. Okay. Oh, oh right there. 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 <laughs> confused me for a second because oh. when it said it, I was trying to. I, I thought maybe she was saying it happened when he was in the Midwest, but oh, I had to read it a couple times. This happened. This is happening, right? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But it is always understood, though. Well, I mean, she said she discovered her husband. And she was saying, well, it happened right. when... So it could have been passed. Right, yeah. So I didn't know exactly if she was saying he had... The affair started when he went to the Midwest. You know, so like I said, I was just reading it. Once yeah. conception. Yeah. 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 It sounds like you can't work with business for the Midwest. They say I said I get... I like how... I don't know, but I got a, an immediate picture in my head. Uh, which you described it really well because I could see her mm -hmm. I feel like doing laundry and I could see that doorway I could see the mm -hmm. messy books on the office so you painted a good picture mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. not only did you catch me with that first sentence of conflict but I was visualizing it and I was like oh she's going to go through the door I know <laughs> they saying black said I'm losing control of it <laughs> 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 If we can move on to the third one, yeah. or the fourth one, the next one. So, but what I hear oh, everybody saying, yeah, no, it go, yeah, what I hear everybody <coughs> saying is uh, it had conflict and, and curiosity right there. Mm -hmm. But it also was clear. You got a clear <coughs> image in your head. Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to do both, to be, to, to get somebody's curiosity mm -hmm. and, and to be clear at the same time. That's true. Because curiosity <coughs> Partly based on not knowing. It's mm -hmm. based on not knowing. Right? But she happened to do that. She she get she <coughs> fed your imagination and had you curious. Okay, so deaf down. Sorry, you got you guys got it. Just read the next one. Yeah. Uh -huh. There were only like five sentences in that moment. first line. Uh -huh. Yeah, but so. in the very first exercise we did, I think there like twelve. Yeah. You know, so you kind of jammed everything in there versus just having a few sentences to convey the uh, message. Oh, yeah. Okay. This one kind of goes back to that first one that said it was a small town, the funerals of a group. I mean, the funeral, whose funeral? I, it doesn't do anything for me. It kind of, it doesn't do it. Yeah, I need to. Now, from, as, as a poet, for me, I kind of felt the, a rhythm right away. I felt like, and I loved the, the present tense. I loved the, because I feel like it's the, it's here, it's now, that the whole book is happening while I'm reading it. This is not something that happened. Yeah. So tense is a big thing, to, and I know we talked about that in terms of choice. But I loved the way it ended. I loved the way it ended, but nothing will ever be the same. Mm -hmm. That is that a second. Yeah. yeah, that's a book. I liked it because it started out with a funeral. Uh, if it starts out with a you're funeral. You're pretty morbid, aren't you? <laughs> The worse the tragedy, the worse the tragedy, the more range of emotions you get to go through. If a book does not, I need to go through all emotions when I read a book. And I, I, it, it grabbed my attention. Okay. I like it. Well, I read this book. I also helped edit it, right? 
so I'm a little biased, but but I understand the point of view of what it, of how it was written. So so yeah, we can't more take your opinion. Three lines. <laughs> yeah, it it hooked me. Is this um, all? the first? I'm sorry. Were the first three lines all that was in the first paragraph? Mm -hmm. That's all that was in the first paragraph, or did you? Yeah, yeah. Our point was I that point yeah, was that yeah. Like, and, sure it and it, the way it was written, um, you have part of the protagonist's journal throughout, you know, and you're living the pain and the abuse that the protagonist goes through, and then you have pastors actually reading from this journal at the funeral, and so, but you wouldn't know that. Mm -hmm. from from the first first three three lines. Lines. But if you got through that first page, I mean, that book was intense. So remember what we're talking about at the very beginning, that some books start off slower than others, some, some you have to discover. So, but we're, we're staying true to the, okay, if you don't know that, you're an editor right. from, and not, not this that, editor. Right. I still would be hooked by that yes. third sentence. The second yes. sentence, I immediately was imagining a black and white film and everybody's yes. looking gloom and doom. Yeah. And, and then the third sentence, I was like, I felt like I was in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it Hooked me. Right. I, I call it, a, it's my own phrase, I don't know what you call it. I call it stack. If you look at the first three sentences, mm -hmm. it's funeral. Then he talks about the old right. black and white right. style of things. Yeah. So you kind of slide down this path of gloom, and then you get the slow motion. Mm -hmm. And then things will never be the same. And I'm a poet, so I can feel that. Yeah. You know, oh, come tell me that. I'm not even trying to be a poet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, no, I would read it out of curiosity. First of all, what the, the question that would come to my head was, what would a person fight for life be done? Mm -hmm. I, dare, I mean, what would create that kind of situation for a person? Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, uh, yeah. and then I would have to find out who died. Yeah, okay. I mean, just those two so questions, but it, well, I would give it a little, you know, a uh, couple of more paragraphs of reading, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And if it's intense, as you said, I would really right. get into it there easier. You go. Yeah. And, and that's the point, would you read some more? Yeah. So, I think the main okay, thing that we got out of this one was was the idea of pace, right? The pacing of the book, as as Avery says, stacking, or and then we can see the poets leading automatically to that because we feel that rhythm or whatever. But but the pacing mm -hmm. of your the book poet. is yeah, it's so. important to yeah it's important to establish your pace, right? Okay. okay. Can we move on to the next one, second page? I could have done without that first line by Jessica Robinson. I mean, yeah. she didn't do that for me, but the story. <laughs> <laughs> but from Belinda Press the Button, I mean, that just, it, it yeah. carries on from well, there. I want to know why she's slamming the slamming. remote and then reading yeah. erotica. I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> what? I don't understand. So now I got to figure out, wait, what happened? What she did? So that makes me want to read more because that's like totally, why are you mad at the TV, but you reading erotica? I don't understand. Where's your focus? Obviously, she, she got a lot going on. You know, making her lose her soul. Like, you know, she, she really, you know, she really got some issues. Like, I wasn't messing with her anyway. Back to Zane. Yeah. Back to Zane. What? I want to find out why she doesn't like that bubbly brown eye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
come in and press okay. the button and say, All hey, right, so we're, 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 we're some things she ate. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're starting to see sort of the same elements coming back, right? We, the imagery, the yeah. pace, the hook, um, attention grabbing, you know, curiosity, some kind of conflict. Okay, let's see if we discover anything else. Let's go next to the one. Next one. All I can say is wow. Wow, yeah. <coughs> Anybody else hear reading? Yeah, I would say what you want. That's all I want to do. I like the pace. It's a very quick pace. Like, I'm rushing. I want to know. Yeah. I would read that. That just pulled me. I'm there. I'm at the hospital. I'm waiting to see you. My new word is stacking, that I just learned it. <laughs> so I love the stacking because you have you have so many you have the newsroom, you have the medical center, you have the emergency room. It's like a tar station. Yeah, you got the pictures are, are so clear right away. So imagery. <coughs> what caught me most was a shame to die just just caught me right off the time because yeah. I thought immediately what are you ashamed? I'm dying for what? What is, is something you're hiding? Is I was looking for that revelation. Are you hiding something? Are you about to reveal some or something like that? The title just me. so your curiosity right there. Right. So Edwin should love this because the title and the first few lines go really well together, right? Oh yeah, in this book, and I, I read this one too, so I'm gonna say the room about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I read that. I read, I read this one. Okay, yeah, I, I gotta I jump out of the workshop mode until the, I read this too. Oh, you did? Oh, you did. Uh, uh, because what is really interesting about this passage and about this book, this is nonfiction. Mm. Right, this is nonfiction. This is nonfiction. Yeah, this is real fiction. And I remember when you talked, I said, you know, that's pretty. That's, that's different. I'm like, yeah. wow. It looks pretty quick. It's a very powerful book. One of the things I liked about the book, and I told the author this, was that it read like a fiction, even though I knew exactly. it was nonfiction. Right. It really read like it was a fiction book, and that's why it really held my attention. Okay, now I have to be honest. I didn't read it because I thought it was nonfiction. So when I read <laughs> this, I was like, this is fiction. No, so I now see I can read that because I'm you know I'm not a nonfiction person. Not even. Well, so what we have added in this set is the wow factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wow factor. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my, that's my new word. Wow. Wow factor. Wow, wow factor. One of. Wow factor. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all starting already, yes. <laughs> so are we ready? Oh, I have not been okay. <laughs> I am so When my wrongdoing feels so good. Yeah, I yes. know. Okay. I have no comment. That's why, that's, what, that's why folks did wrong. <laughs> and if you felt bad, they wouldn't be your turn. <laughs> Aside from the grammar, maybe? I don't know. But I am the secret definitely grabs my attention. And um, I do think that this is a confused character, and I would hope they wouldn't confuse me on the way to it. But I, I would read more. I don't know if I would read the book, but I would read more. I think once you start out the first sentence, and you know, the grammar is not correct, and I'm, I'm questioning whether yeah. I yeah. want to go on to you. Yeah. When the grammar is not good, uh, if it's the way that character speaks, it's in quotes, yeah, then that's yeah. why I can accept it. But if it's throughout, then I took two out. This is starting out like a, a narrative, or is this first person, or what? First person. I mean, is this? I'm asking questions. Oh, oh, so we know. All we did was write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's not like the writer's having a conversation with the reader. You yeah. saw it all, uh -huh. like he's talking directly to the reader. Mm -hmm. 
So, so is that first yeah, person that or matter. third person? I think it's first person. First person. First person. It's first person. I believe it's first person. It's second person. Yeah, it's, it's first person. But you see what's happening? We're getting bogged down in something that doesn't have that doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with the book right. because uh, of the editing oh, and the editing problem. Yeah. Yeah. So so editing we, would be the thing that for your first your first line first paragraph needs to be so on point. One thing in Bob publisher, but yeah. The author we referenced earlier from the first five pages, he talks about in, in, in his book that publishers, uh, they get a tone and a pace about your story very early on. Mm -hmm. And they'll make determinations just like this. He said, if you're bad in the first three or four sentences, they assume it's going to be bad. They don't even go read it. And they don't, they don't go for it. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say um, whether the grammar was correct or not in the first sentence. It did make me think, do I identify with this person? Oh. It did make me think that. Because yeah. uh, all of us have, you know, the same, you know, uh, have you ever woke up in the morning feeling like you didn't belong, period. Mm -hmm. Grab me, but just identity person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if, 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 if he, he or she had said, ah, oh, coming out of a hangover, and then asked the question, then it would have made more sense to me. But to start with that, it's like, it just, it made me feel like. Okay. It was too many questions in one yes. paragraph. That's what it was confusing me. Too many questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah, any, editing, editing, <laughs> editing is our point from that. We're on the bottom of page two. All right, now there are a few people here we haven't heard anything from. So before Xavier starts calling on you, suggest you volunteer. I, I think it lays out the suspense of the delicate form. You know, I mean, suspense of the delicate form. I like that. I am the writer. Suspense of the delicate form. Me too. I like that. I mean, you, you know it. You know it's lurking, but it's yeah, not really yeah. coming out and telling you that. Very subtle. Yeah. Yeah, I think the last, the last sentence mm -hmm. is what grabbed me a whole lot more than the beginning. Yeah. So that's that second. was at the top, it so got me. Would that if, if it's just based on the first sentence, nah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe I read the second one, but definitely the last sentence. I mean, I agree. Mm -hmm. So would that be an example of stacking? Uh, yes. <laughs> Actually, you want to put that stack at the top. <laughs> I like. I like the fact that it was so clear. Maybe Monique, you're gonna. No, no, tell us. Tell us. What we're doing. Yeah, we want to hear it. I was just rearranging the paragraph. I have a habit of doing that. So, what would you do? Uh, I would have moved the story about kids, you know, okay, uh, his, his unconfessed sins that was worse than hers. And then I would have put, thankfully, the three oldest daughters went home from college and the 12 year old, then I, would have, I just would have rearranged it. So, so you put the last sentence first? Um, no, not the last sentence. Darcy was silent. That would have been where I would have started. Oh. I was just thinking, you know, it kind of depends on what's coming after. Right. To say how you would rearrange a sentence. Yeah. It depends on what, what the focus is of the actual narrative. If you're taking it into a place where she's, you're going to do more exposition about this unconfessed sin that she has, then I think it's right on target. But if you're going into a place where you're going to be talking about the kids, then I think you're right. You know, it kind of depends on where the author is going from there. I think I can speak on where the author yeah, was going. Yeah, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she wanted to establish that they had a solid family and a solid relationship, and they had been together for 30 years, and he still didn't know her secret, her sin. Her sin. Mm -hmm. 
So that was the premise for stacking. Well, that'll make me mad. <laughs> And, and I want I wanted them to I, I want I, she wanted them to side with uh, the husband because he's you know but without even knowing it, I like for them to pick sides so I can put them wrong at the end. You, know, so. you have a book with you in the car because I would love to know what's the next paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all you, you want. want. Okay. That's oh, all. No, that's all you get. Okay. It's all no more by the book. Yeah. She's I think that's the end of the first paragraph. She drags you into the rest of the book. So we have. Yeah, it's just, yeah. We have curiosity. Mm -hmm. We have stacking. We have suspense in a delicate form. <laughs> 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 Oh, writers, it's like, this, you so much. You never get it in the box. <laughs> and you have the hook. You have the hook. Yeah, At the yeah. last minute, there's the hook. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I would want to continue reading. I think it painted a good picture. I feel some kind of way about a man being so obsessed with his fashion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit much for me. But then I'm, okay, then he's like a pretty boy or whatever. So I'm hoping that this woman that he meets brings him down. <laughs> That's just me. I, I did. I, I feel some. He is really into. There's some arrogance there. He it? is, and I feel like he has spent more time in the mirror than me. I, <laughs> I didn't get that next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, anybody? I like else? that it's in first person. Yes, I like. It. I like that. Yes, go ahead. I think he over. I think he over the weather. <coughs> oh, okay. Mm. Why? Tell tell me why. Because he was talking about not getting his tux wet, so. so. <laughs> That was right. You can tell. You can tell. He already sets the. He already sets the stage. Okay. Of the rain. Uh -huh. okay. He always say. He always states the fact of the soap parking lot. Mm -hmm. He already. He then he said the, the repellent fabric. Okay. I, I think you get that. Well, for me. Okay. When I read, I get that before he says that. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. I say, for me, the sentence structure, while good. It is elongated and it's, it just took me a while to get through it because it was so descriptive and it was kind of, and so I, I just kind of felt like, you know, the structure, even though it was good, it just kind of took me a while to get through it. Gotcha. I don't know if it's the journalism background I have for brevity and getting to the point, but yeah. this was tedious for me to read. <laughs> there were so many adjectives. <laughs> I was like, you can take out a third of the adjectives and look me better because I just felt like I was like in a department store going through records. Yeah. <laughs> like where is that? Where is it? And I never got to anything at the end of the paragraph even to like reward me for having read it. I would say as far as the like when you're I think, that's a, I think that's the conflict of writing in first person that you have to be descriptive enough that you can get so that the reader can see where you're at right. and then maybe not be too descriptive but I appreciate that as first person because I think the metaphors were good and hopefully all of them is not that many for each scene that they describe mm -hmm. but I think for it to be in first person there was a very clear picture gotcha. of, I, I think it was good in helping him describe you know but I do have to bring my biases in as, as a guy. Yeah. He, he told me that I wouldn't have been paying no attention to him or anything else he would have been saying to me after this. So, I mean, I think that, and it's a good, it's a good way. It depends on who the book is written for. Like he was saying, you may not attract, you may repel a man a little bit because that's a little much. But I think if you're writing and he's trying to attract a woman, smitten. He kind of says, I'm ready, I'm mm -hmm. the rest. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if somebody was going to say something about really the title, because I think that's critical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's in both. Yeah. 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 
I think it would be more effective if instead of writing in first person and using all um, kind of redundant adjectives, I, I'm not opposed to redundant adjectives if there's a payoff for it, if he's got some sort of theme that he's trying to, to work into the narrative. But for me, it would be better if he has um, it in a, a like a, a thought he's having instead of simply describing, I thought to myself, blah, 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 blah. And then you can get into a, not a dialogue, but a voice. You can hear him speaking rather than a narrative about what he was thinking. Let him think it. Let's hear his thought. And then that would draw me in deeper rather than him talking about the situation. Let him, let's hear his voice talking about it. Okay. So even in first person? In first person, no narrative. Verse, you can do it as an inner monologue. But, but it's kind of is now. Yeah, it's kind of is. Now. Now. This is an inner monologue. He's, he's, yeah. You know, he's yeah. I do want to say, as a poet, I loved it because it. I just, I felt the gale like winds. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, and then at the same time I was being fed concrete thoughts like there's a fundraiser and I knew where it was, it's at Goodwood and mm -hmm. I know this guy is arrogant and he's going to meet this woman and I feel like when I'm Michelle, I'm like, I hope she, <laughs> I, I you know, so that, that's where I was. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, so, wait, wait. As we got past the description, I mean, he, he, he tells about himself. You know, black tie wasn't just a choice. This is something I'm yeah. good at. You know, most people are jeans and t-shirt people yeah. nowadays, but yeah. I'm good it's at black tie. Sense. And then I intend to work this magic on this woman. Yeah. I mean, he it, his personality yeah. comes through very differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, even after the description of the clothes, you know, you know his intentions, you know how he thinks about himself, and you know the kind of things he's going to orchestrate. Intrigue. <laughs> 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 I was enjoying it. <laughs> All right. First, anybody? Uh, it was um, humorous and suspense. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Humor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think it, like, it's just funny. Um, is there actually going to be a love connection on this? Because she's really. You know, she she really is focused on how fine this man is. You know, he just told her that you know she could be charged by a right on. She still made time. To, you know, he's ex. You know, so like, oh, okay, are they gonna find love? You know, near death experience. I don't know. Is he gonna treat her like a ride? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about, um, you know, first sentences. And I mean, if, if it was just to say first sentence, would it grab me? I don't know. I don't know if I want to read about military tractors or whatever, but first paragraph, yes, definitely. You know, I want to go on and see, you know, the dangers and so forth. But um, so maybe, I don't know if, if I would have opened with the first sentence that I opened with, if first sentences are very, very important. You know what I mean? But I think as a first paragraph, yes, it grabs me and yes, I would want to read more. 
for me, it took me a while to see what was going on. <laughs> for, for me, I mean, I thought it was kind of, when I got down to where um, when she starts talking about the man and so forth and so on, I think, okay, I got it. And for us, now it was, I was in the military, so when she opened up with the military girl yeah. style, I was thinking, okay, you got my attention there, but where are you going with it? So, so would you change her first sentence? Yeah, what would you? Would what would you? You would change a paragraph. <coughs> I, I would definitely change it. Now, uh, I have my open, I have my opening sentence like in the blazing <laughs> sun, fifteen of us climb. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of took that whole first sentence off and kept it going from there. Yeah. Keep your arm on the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 you talked about the sun. Yeah. So we're, now we're talking about editing as in the last one, as opposed to, yeah, this is, to uh, this is this is um, more, does it, remember voice that up, but is there a hook, does it grab you, are you interested? Uh, because page. each yeah. person writes differently, so yeah. you would write, every, we'd all write it differently, yeah. Yeah. but does it grab you? What we came up with from all of this is that we definitely want to see some sort of conflict in the beginning, uh, curiosity, avoiding cliches, and more of a show me, not tell me sort of attitude, something that's attention grabbing. We want imagery, but we want it to be clear. There has to be a hook. The pacing is very important. And we want that wow factor, which goes back with the, the conflict and curiosity. But we abs whatever we write, we absolutely have to edit it. And uh, if we have to stack it to, to give, it, give it body. And it's nice if it's suspenseful and humorous at the very beginning. We want you to come up with an opening paragraph, a short opening paragraph based on an idea you have. You, but using the, the, the elements that we just talked about, having a hook, you know, getting being clear, just right. So we'll give you uh, five to ten minutes to come up with an opening or first paragraph based on the themes that we have. You, you pick your opening. When I discovered my husband was cheating on me, divorce was not an option. He had to die. <laughs> There you go. This was it. <laughs> His side piece was an unwilling participant, and my pearl handle pistol didn't scare her. However, the 8x10 glosses of her with my husband, Infinite Grante Delecti, addressed to the TV station considering her for a high profile anchor position, finally convinced her to take part in my plan to murder him. Oh. <laughs> This is a book I'm working on, and it's going to be entitled The Journey. It's about this young girl's life, her journey from uh, no, the island. Don't tell us all that. Just oh, okay, just, just to read. <laughs> all right, The Journey. We call her mother for mother. Her name is Darcy Wilson. I am 16 years old, and mother and I went across the city to Irish town. It was an hour's walk. She pointed to a small house erected on blocks of stones. Under there is where me slept with you in my belly. A hot summer's breeze whisked across my face and I stared speechless. My head is spinning, but I hear myself asking, what did you just say, mother? What a divorce. Those are the first words out of my mouth when I hear him slam on the alarm. I've waited five years to say those words out loud. Today is my 50th birthday, and I'll be damned if I wait one more day. The lack of delicacy with which he passes gas as he rolls out of I was angry. No. I was mad as hell. The tears fell heavily from my face, but were, e but were easily disguised in the, in the torrential rains as they swelled my body. Why did they do that to me? Who do they think they are? If I make it through the night, things will no doubt have to change. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
to go behind that. All right. Um, this is called Seven Days, Seven Nights. It's a Christian thriller. The full moon gave exquisite romantic light as they arrived at the secluded cabin for their long-awaited honeymoon. She was nervous as it would be her first time. He was elated. The weight had been too much for him. His love for her made it worth it to him. He had given up his promiscuous lifestyle for her. However, the skeletons in his closet were waiting in the cabin to drag him and his secrets to hell. Oh boy. Jason sat on the cold cement floor, blew hard warm air into his damp palms as, his as he cupped them around his mouth. The other guys in the room were discussing the night's latest happenings on the cuts. Somehow their details lacked the logic to explain why they were now in this cold room, herded like cattle. Jason knew why he was there. The question was, would the judge believe him? The bruise on his left eye and the pain in his abdomen already assured him that the police didn't believe him. Mm. I have never liked transvestites. <laughs> I'm hooked. I'm hooked. <laughs> and the fact that the man sitting next to me at Sue Lynn's nail shop getting his feet polished hot and pink was one of them was a little more than off-putting. He had to be over 300 pounds, waving his big fat pork chop hands in the air while sing-songing his words, while telling some story, was tr and it was truly getting on my last nerves. Then he spoke directly to me. Girlfriend, are you busy tonight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> When nature calls, I come running. But human nature is another story, and at times can be unpredictable. I can always count on my morning cup of coffee kicking in and making me run to the bathroom 15 minutes later. But I just never knew when my next romance would claim my soul. In the end, it would call me, and I'd come running. What I couldn't rely on was keeping any sense in my head after I'd given away my heart. I don't know if I can come. <laughs> I, I just wrote this just now. So. <laughs> um, while driving down the highway, I see an, an advertisement: Escobar's Fine Dining. The food looks good. I mean, yeah, the food looks good. Although I caught it in a glare going 50 miles an hour. I'll try it, but who shall I call? Not Sylvia. No matter what the food is like, there's always a problem with her. And being polite, my food gets cold. Anybody else? Dark, handsome, and tall. He was every woman's dream until he opened his mouth. <laughs> wow. da Damien knew how to charm with a look or a line, but once he made it past the introductions, he pulled his victims into the quicksand of his self-absorption. Wow. But tonight, none of that mattered to Jean. Mm -hmm. She wanted a man for dark and nefarious purposes, <laughs> and this one would do just fine. No, just uh, the next meeting is May 10th at 12 o'clock at this same location right here. Our presenters will be Tremaine and Cynthia. I don't think they have a topic yet, but as soon as they send me a topic, I'll get that out to you. So uh, we'll get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs>